U Financial Group is an investment advisory and financial planning organization offered through licensed and qualified MML investors. If you're looking for a company to help plan for your future, manage your financial assets, or even estate planning, check out U Financial at ufinancialgroup.com. So, you know, like working in healthcare, I've seen yes. the opioid pandemic firsthand yes. and how people can be overprescribed and yes. even for the littlest things like a sprained ankle, yes. what kind of narcotics can they give you? Yes. You know, where you've seen it. How well, do you, how do I you lived feel? it because in 96, I was diagnosed with hepatitis C. Okay. And my doctor started prescribing me Percocets, five milligrams without the aspirin. They were the powdered capsules. For hep C. For hep C. Okay. Okay, now there was a good cause for that or whatever, but of course, you know, me being who I am and my wife being who she was, we started snorting the capsules and that started it all. We started drug, you know, seeking different mm. doctors, different prescriptions. Um, so we went from five milligram to Percocets, five milligram Percocets, by the time we were done, we were being prescribed 80 milligram Oxycontin she was for arthritis and they were giving her fentanyl patches for arthritis, 50 to 100 milligram fentanyl patches. They don't even give that to chemo patients. No, they don't. Cancer patients don't get what she was getting. And at that point, I guess the pharmaceutical companies were pushing the Oxycontin out for doctors to prescribe them and it was flowing. I mean, mm -hmm. we were getting everything we needed right from the doctor. So doctors are intentionally over prescribing? I, oh, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, at that time. At that time. Before the epidemic became real. Oh, I've, I've seen firsthand how many people get hooked on opiates. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's nothing for when I work a shift in Narcan, yeah. five, ten people oh, in yeah. a 24 hour shift. Yeah. And sometimes it's even the same person you go back for. Oh, of course. Which because... just, that leads to how addicting narcotics and opiates can be. Yeah, and then and, and that's what it was. And then when the doctors feel the heat, Mm -hmm. They take you off all the scripts that they put you on. Okay, so what happens when they when they pull you cold turkey from those narcotics? What do you think happens? You go to the street. You know, you go get heroin bundles. It's the same thing as opiate. I mean, it's, it's basically the you same. You get the same feeling from heroin. Oh, of course. Wow. Of course. Wow. And that's what it is. And it's cheaper. Because once they take you off of it, you're out trying to buy the pills. People are selling them for a crazy price. It's cheaper just to go buy a bundle of dope and just yeah. do the dope, but then the dope becomes your world, you know, becomes your life. So now going forward in your life. Okay. Uh, how, do, how do people look at you now that you're, you've recovered? Your friends look at you the same? You know, I've always been the person I am. What you see is who I've always been, Tate. Mm -hmm. And as far as my drug abuse, that's the only thing that's different in my life right now. You know, um, I don't no longer use. A lot of my friends are proud of me. A lot of my friends are gone, mm -hmm. you know, either dead or incarcerated. The ones I have left or every time I talk to them, they say, hey, we're glad you're doing good, George Ryder, still fighting the struggle. And I have a lot of guilt with that. You know, I always had guilt when I worked for the state for nine years. I always had guilt of the people I left behind. You know, because why me? Why did I get the hand up? And we talked about the hand up. Uh -huh. A lot of people don't get a hand up. I've had so many hands held out to me to give me a hand up because I guess of the person who I am, the chances I've gotten. So that, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of my friends are proud of me. My kids are proud of me, you know. But do, you, do you feel guilty that you couldn't bring them with you? I feel guilty because I'm the one that got to get out. You know, why, why am I not still down there? Why am I not homeless? Why am I not still addicted to drugs, you know? And mm -hmm. I wish I could be their hand up. I, I'm just not in that position to be that. Yeah, I, I understand. You know, I completely. take advantage. But then again, you got to take advantage of your hands up. So a lot of my and friends... you have. Yeah, I have. And I think a lot of my friends would take advantage of them. And there are some that like living that lifestyle. You know, and I'm not going to knock that lifestyle. I miss being down on the streets running around. I think about that. I never regret anything I've done. You know, I mean, there are regrets, of course. But as being who I am, 
I have no regrets on that. Obviously, with your with your history, yeah. When you're in pain, like you said, you need both your knees replaced. Yeah. You go in there. How do they treat you? They treat me like I'm seeking drugs. Like um, I had an episode where I had to go into the emergency room. I wasn't feeling good. I was having bad pains everywhere. And the first thing that the emergency doctor told me is, "This is not a place for you to get your heroin." But you haven't used and you said over ten for years. For years, and I told her. And the medicine that I'm on now, Mobic never heard of it. Well, it's a good medicine for arthritis. I do 15 milligrams a day. It's a non-narcotic, non-addicting, and it helps me because I can feel it when I don't have it. Okay. And that's the only thing I need in my life. I don't try to go get pills, but that's how they treat people now. It, the epidemic has made it so hard for people to get the medication that they need. Yeah, that, that hurts me to the soul because you got people who are, who are clean. Yeah. And all they want is a little bit of help. To and manage their, and their it's, physical it's, it's pain. It's so hard. We're not yeah. talking about emotional pain. We're no. talking about physical yeah. pain. Yeah. Prime example, I rolled my ankle a couple years ago. Yeah. Nothing more than a bad sprain. Yeah. But they were real quick to, you want some, want some oxys, you want of this course, and that? Of course, because you don't have that background. So I don't have that background. You don't but have that background. If you were to go in. Oh, I'm, I'm on a list. I'm on the drug seeking list with the doctors in Hershey. My name pops up. I don't know if it still does, but, yeah. it, but then, I mean, I can't fault them. I have to fault myself for that action. But people change. People do People change. get older. You know, there's a lot more pain when it comes with age. So, you know, Let's, especially when you're a big guy and you're walking around on bad knees. I hope people take away from that episode that everyone can change. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has the ability to change. And, and yeah. you're changed. And you just have to, people, I want people to see you and other people who have changed as regular Because folks. I've had a hand up. Yeah. It's all about a hand up. It's all about taking advantage of what people want to give to you. Yeah. So, yeah, finally, this late in my life, I didn't take advantage of a lot of them earlier, but this state, you know, this uh, part of my life, this where I'm at now, yeah, I'll take it. What would today's George say to 15 year old George because you said you started using and selling when you were 12 years old yeah so if you could say anything to that younger version of yourself would you say anything to change the outcome of your life well I'm sure most people that are watching this would think that I would go back and tell the 15 year old George what heartache he was going to feel what he was going to go through in his life if he didn't change his ways mm -hmm. but I would go back and tell him not to change anything why because I wouldn't have got to be with the woman I was with when I got to meet the people that I become close to, my family, my friends. I call my friends my family because they are my family. I consider you family. Um, thank you, Tate. I consider you family. You can be my little cousin. All right, man. Okay, that my little good. cousin. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and that's how I feel. I wouldn't change nothing, man. I'm, I'm not ashamed of who I am. Some things I've done I'm ashamed of, but everybody out there got something in their closet that they're ashamed of. Everything led you to where you're at today. It did, and I'm in a good place. I'm in the best place I can be right now. I feel that way. You know? Yeah. I truly do. I, I, like I tell you yeah. all the time, I'm proud of where you're at today yeah. from where you came from. And I have the best barber in Cumberland County. <laughs> what, else, what else can I say? You know what I mean? Look uh, at my hair. I don't know My hair that. tells the truth, there's does it lot, not? There's a lot of good barbers in Cumberland County. I don't know, Tate, man. You're good and quick, man. Good conversation. So I appreciate you. You know, with my barbershop phobia, That's right. well, I, I appreci appreciate everything about you. And I appreciate I you willing to come out and, and do this. Yeah, and I appreciate you guys giving me a chance to come out and tell my story. I think it's good for my soul, man. It is. And just think if I was that boring, George, I went back and told my 15-year-old self to change, me and you wouldn't be sitting here rapping right now. We would not be. Because everything happens for a reason, right? The one thing that I, from, from other episodes of therapy is after people get a chance to come on and talk, yeah. they feel this... This yeah. release, this cathartic a release, release yeah. because they finally get a chance to say things that they might not be comfortable saying in everyday life. Yeah. And, and you, I, I hope you get to take away that too. And I do. And you gave me an opportunity to tell my youngest daughter, you know, I'm sorry for everything I put you through and sorry for my abuse over the years. And, you know, I'm not that person no more though. I'm a better person. I hope I am. And I hope I'm a great grandfather and good dad. So. Uh, maybe one day you will be a great Oh, Lord. 
How oh, long? Look, I, I don't think I'm going to be around that long. We'll <laughs> see, man. I, you know, it's all about quality, not quantity, right? You can say that quality about life. Quality of life. That's quality what it is. Quality of life, not quantity in life. Quality of life, not quantity of life. That's what it's all about. We'll get you some water. We'll get you cooled down. <laughs> it ain't even the water. I just need to cool down a little bit. And say it again. Water. 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 Can we, we say water? Evan and I have this debate on the weekly. It's water. It's water. It's water. It is. It's not water. Water. Come on in. Sit down in. Okay. They'll, they'll, they'll set yeah. up how they I'll want to I'll sponge off a little bit yeah. here. Here at home, the number of people becoming addicted to powerful pain medications is climbing at a very alarming rate. The governor says it's time for Harrisburg to wake up and face the problem head on.